Good day. Again, I greet you like Paul greeted his congregants with grace and peace. Many times Paul uh, added a word like holy ones, like righteous ones, like the followers of Christ. Today I'm going to say something about holy ones. God, because Christ saved me, because I said yes to him in faith, he started living in my soul, in my spirit. I was recreated by the Holy Spirit. And in Christ now, I have become holy. Positionally in Christ, I am holy in my spirit. Yes, I have to become holy in my body and the other parts of my hum humanity. And this reality of what has taken place in my spirit needs to move out into the rest of my, my humanity. But in essence, at the core of my being, in my spirit, where God's spirits live, I am holy. So grace and peace to you, holy ones. We read again from Hebrews 11, and we specifically read verse 3. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what was seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commanded as righteous. When God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. Abel is our first hero of faith. Hebrews 11 discusses the heroes of faith in the Old Testament, and Abel was the first one mentioned. Now remember, he was the first son of Adam and Eve. His name actually meant, God has given me a gift. And when Eve had him, she said, God has given me a gift. Abel was a gift. But Abel was also the first person that did not see God. Remember, Satan, the fall of sin, they were thrown out of the garden. They could not walk with God as previously. Abel was the first person not to see God, but yet believe. Abel was the first example of faith without seeing. And that is why his sacrifice was acceptable to God. Why did the people in the Old Testament sacrifice? Because they've sinned. So the, the Hebrew says, and, and, and Leviticus, there can no, no be no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. So the bottom line is, we had to sacrifice something so that the blood of that animal could cover the sin. But that was only temporary. The true sacrifice would come in Jesus Christ much later. Now the problem of sacrifice in the Old Testament is it became a ritual. People sinned and then said, oh well, I'll just kill a dove or a goat or a sheep or a, or a bull and that will cover my sin. And then I can carry on and doing what was normal. No, that's not how it was supposed to be. And that's why David says in Psalm 51, 16, You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise that. Another part in Isaiah 1, he says, The multitude of your sacrifices, what they are to me, says the Lord. I have more than enough of burnt offerings, of rams and the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls, lambs and goats. It was never just about sacrifice. It was about the attitude of the heart that brought the sacrifice. And what was the attitude in Abel's heart? Faith. He believed. He was the first one to believe in a God that he could not see. Faith, guys, is the only acceptable sacrifice to God. And maybe that's what we're supposed to learn out of this whole situation. Faith sustains. Faith is the only true sacrifice. Let us pray. Dear Lord, give us faith. Help us to believe in an unseen God. Make us able and make us realize that the only true sacrifice you require is faith. Amen.